Welcome to our fourth COVID-19 information and question answer video. We've had very positive feedback on the video so far and uh, both on the content and on the questions and answers that have been presented on the videos. Many of the questions that have been submitted, Mike and myself have tried to answer the best of our ability and go over those questions. There will be some questions that have been missed for various reasons. I will go over a few of the questions I think have been missed, but as far as benefits, most of the questions have been hit on. If you have a question that you believe that may not have been answered fully on the video or not even touched on, there could be several reasons why. One of the reasons is the video is viewed by thousands of people so far, and there's certain procedures and practices we may not want you know, everybody to know how we operate, not that we're doing anything illegally, it's just we want to keep the practice within house. So I'll go over a few of the questions that basically uh, I believe have still been outstanding and hopefully if you do still continue to have a question, please call Mike or myself and we'll gladly go over your question in detail with you uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So the first question I have, at what point will people coming off SNA be allowed to go uh, graduated hours or work hardening. This is a situation we discuss with the benefits committee people, uh, Mike and myself, and we've had a meeting with the company as well. This is one where you should attend the health center if you're ready to return to work. With the gra uh, rotating layoffs, yes, it could kind of interfere with uh, graduated hours or with uh, a work hardening program, but you first need to get into the health center and contact Mike Murphy, who is our placement rep. Between the two of them, they'll come up with a program. But like a lot of scenarios that Mike is going to go over, there's certain people, certain departments you need to go see when the situation happens. So in this case, if you find that you're in, you're just starting a work hardening, you're in the middle of our work hardening, retouch with the health center, see where you are, and they'll be able to help you out. Another question is, so when I go back to work this month, I will be, well, I, I will be ineligible to collect CERB. Why can't the company pay me, pay me all of my sub they owe me on the first Thursday of the week I return to work? Part of the reason with that is the Liberal government at this time has taken the position that our sub funds, our sub monies, it's illegal to pay while you're on sub. While you're on CERB, sorry. The people who are laid off in September are collecting EI and sub, and the sub program is one that's negotiated with the company and they've approved that. Unfortunately, with the CERB at this time, we don't have the language saying we can collect our sub. I will go through further uh, into the CERB issue and our sub issue uh, later on in my presentation. But at this time, if we there pay you, say the first Thursday you come back and Service Canada was to find out that you got a large sum of money for that period, they'll allocate that money back to the periods of time you collected CERB and then you'll end up in an overpayment that they'll ha you'll have to pay back to the government so you're no further ahead. So just be patient with the CERB and SUB issue. Hopefully we get it resolved and I'll tell you what actions uh, we are taking when in with the national as well to hopefully get it resolved down the road. One other issue question was, will the SUB fund last until May 2021 if rotating layoffs continue? Last round of negotiations, our sub fund, our sub fund uh, from the last contract is at 290 million. As of February, we've only used about $10,000 of that 290 million. We use definitely use some monies right now uh, with the layoffs that we had through this uh, serve issue, not the serve, but the uh, COVID-19 issue. But we're nowhere near that. We have uh, more than enough money. The only time we would possibly be short is if we had a total plant closure and had to pay everybody uh, the monies owed to them through VTAP, IMP, and, and programs like that that we've negotiated. So uh, the monies for rotating layoffs is most definitely there. My next issue is the CERB and SUB issue. If we go through the population of our plant, we have about 1,200 people from March 22nd, 1,200 people who are collecting unemployment and sub. We have about 500 who are on CERB with no sub and we have 400 junior workers who aren't entitled to any sub at all just due to the uh, time frame. They have to work over five years and we have around 400 of those. 
what I like to do is kind of go through the history of what's been going on. Every time I get on one of these videos, I say that we're doing this and we're doing this. And I, sound, I said last time, it sounded positive that we would have an answer. We did somewhat have an answer that some form of payout last Friday. Unfortunately, GM lawyers got involved and now that's been pulled out. So I'll kind of go through what GM's issues is, uh, position is, what the Nationals position is, and then I'll go through the Liberal government. The Liberal government are the ones who are holding this up right now, and I'll try to kind of go through exactly some of the scenarios and what is being done, hopefully to get this rectified and get our members the sub they're entitled to. The first thing I'd like to explain is General Motors. We've had various meetings with General Motors. Our Nationals had various meetings with General Motors. I know Mike Van Bokel's had meetings with Linda Trevisan on the, on the sub-issues. GM has taken the position they believe, we, not that they believe, that they are saying we are entitled to 65, up to 65% while we're on layoff. Unfortunately, the Liberal government is saying you cannot pay it out of this sub-fund the way the language of the CERB has been written. A letter was written from Matthew Hugh, General Director of Human Relations and Labor Relations of General Motors. And I'm not going to read the whole letter, but I'll just read a couple of the uh, sentences out of it. And the first paragraph says, the parties jointly acknowledge that the federal government current guidelines do not permit an employer to pay sub to those in receipt of CERB. And that's why they haven't paid it. The last paragraph, what they're saying is we truly share the union's frustration regarding the program restrictions on the company's ability to pay sub benefits to those members and receipt of CERB while on temporary layoff due to COVID-19. The purpose of this letter is to provide the union with further confirmation regarding the company's genuine intention of our ongoing efforts to resolve this matter for our employees in a positive matter. General Motors wants to get this resolved. They're getting their hand, their hands are tied right now with the Liberal government and they're lobbying as well through their, uh, they have a government relations department as well that they're trying to get this resolved as well. The sooner they do, the better. We want, we're hoping to have this resolved before we come back to work. This week we had 40, 50 skilled trades and I'll go over the skilled trades issue in a minute, but basically they're coming back to work after only receiving $500 per week while they're off. The second uh, issue in this i like to just talk about is the National. The National is going to, uh, they have made up a letter. It has been published yet, hopefully shortly after this video. We'll put it online and take it in the plan as well. I am not going to read the whole letter as well, but what I do want to do is explain is the National has been on board fighting this. They have uh, their National representatives who are meeting with uh, the Ministry Department trying to get this resolved. And in the last couple weeks Jerry's been on Jerry Diaz has been hands-on meeting with the ministers the invo ministers involved as well as conference calls trying to get this resolved he had a meeting on Saturday uh, and they said they would get back to him midweek today is Thursday hopefully we hear something shortly from that but as of right now the Liberal government has still taken the position the sub cannot be paid well on serve what can we do is in the last part of the letter they said if you've been on our website, you have seen that we have an online petition. We're asking, call your MP. I mean, the Liberals, I do not know why they're taking this position, but they have. We need pressure on the Liberal government. Even if you're not on CERB, if you're on layoff, EI, and sub, still call for fellow members to your MP. Fill out the, uh, the online petition as well. The more we get in there, the more pressure we can put on the Liberal government. As a national, uh, it says, what can uh, members do to help? And I'm just going to read the last paragraph of the letter. I will post it on online uh, later. But it says, as a national union continues to work, we will continue to coordinate directly with union leadership and provide membership updates as the new information becomes available. In the meantime, it's imperative that members participate in the Don't Deny Subplan campaign, filling out the online petition and then the online petitions on our site on Local 8, so you can go on there and fill that out. You can, on, you can also contact your member apartment directly, and a lot of us have already done that. They need to hear from us directly from the constituents, so if you are, especially if you've been denied, you need to give them an earful and let them know how dissatisfied you are with them upholding your CERB. 
I'd like to kind of go over now with the SERP scenarios. And this is how ridiculous this is, the Liberal government's taking position. They have a wage subsidy program that they've put in with employers that they're allowing employers to uh, bring employees back to work. They're getting $500 a week SERP, and they're getting topped up to, I believe it's $847 per week. So they basically created their own sub plan, a government sub plan, topping up through the wage subsidy program, but they won't allow us to pay our sub. And take, uh, looking back, we are, every Thursday, Trudeau gets on, on uh, TV and he explains another program of how someone else is getting money. Every Thursday I hear how someone else is getting money. We're not, we are not asking for money from the Liberal government. We are asking for our money that was negotiated with General Motors through our sub plan. So it has no cost whatsoever to Liberal government. So I do not know why they're taking that position. I mentioned the trades because the trades, we have a lot of trades who were, well, basically all of them were laid off. So close to 200 trades were laid off. A lot of these guys have never been laid off. The first time they're laid off, they don't get to collect EI, which is 573, and they don't get to collect sub. 65% of your gross earnings. So most of these individuals would be close to $1,000 per week they would collect while they're on layoff. Right now, they are getting 29% of their wages that they, sh uh, of their gross wages. While other people are getting full sub, EI, and as well as other people are getting wage sub, other people in other industries are getting the wage subsidy program, 847. So, you know, there's one example of, uh, I mentioned the trades because of the large disparity of, uh, of the, the percentage of the money. But the other ones, are like our 400 junior workers, they're already at a low wage. So they're going to lay it off. They may have been 573 per week, but I'm going to say roughly it'd be 530, 540 because of their wage. They're only getting $500. So they, got, they have been uh, axed 30, 40, $50 per week as well. The people that we are looking at are the 500 people. They are all in an employment insurance emergency response benefit program. They are not strictly in the CERB. There are two streams. One is the CERB, Canadian Emergency Response Benefit, and then there's a second stream called the Employment Insurance Emergency Response Benefit. It would be so easy for the Liberal governments just to take those people that are categorized because they have to report every two weeks. CERB people report every four weeks. So I see no reason why the Liberal government can't look at those people that are in receipt of EI, ERB, and just put them into the sub program and allow the sub to be paid. More pressure has to be put on the Liberal government to get this done, the sooner the better. Just a few things to wrap up. I'd like to say before we close, Mike Van Bokel did talk about retirements. Um, we have posted the May 1st retirements due to the amount of people that have gone without your traditional retirement cake. And in June, we'll post another list of, I believe it's around 35, 40 people that are gonna retire in June. With the COVID-19 issue, a lot of people have chosen to retire early. So I would ask that you take a look at our site. If you see a name of a coworker or friend, someone you worked with over the years, please give them a call, text them or email them, just drop a line, say happy retirement. Unfortunately, we, they haven't had the traditional team uh, cake ceremony and had the day to walk the plant. So it'd be nice if they did hear from some of the coworkers, they never got a chance to walk around and say bye to everybody. One other issue is your information with the company. Right now they are calling people to return to work and a lot of our members do not have the correct information or phone number to contact. Please contact them right away because you may be sitting at home waiting for a phone call and they don't have the right number. If you don't have the right information, you will be missed. You'll be sent a letter, of, uh, letter from them to report in five days, but you could be out a week's pay and you've already been out of, out of enough money already. So please call employee relations, give them your phone number, update the number and that way you can be contacted as soon as possible. And the last issue is on a return to work. If you have any issues whatsoever, please contact your committee person, the safety rep, or your benefits representative on any concerns you have on a return to work. We'll get through this together still. So please stay safe and hopefully everyone get, we'll get through this together. Thank you.